Hi there and welcome back to the channel. This is just going to be a very beginner friendly mid journey tutorial on how I use it to create graphics and design for my Etsy shop and save a ton of time and also create unique designs that everybody else isn't using like off of Creative Fabrica or Creative Market. And this is also probably really helpful to anyone doing print on demand if you're looking to generate your own images and kind of beat out the competition, so to speak, of everyone else who is using the same similar graphics from all of the commercial use platforms that are out there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hop on my computer and go over a few things that were requested. So if you don't already have a mid journey subscription, this is kind of just what their subscription page looks like. And I was asked which one um, I use and I use the pro plan though. I do. I, I pretty much highly recommend that if you are going to be using this for a lot of design and commercial use, you'll probably need something like the pro plan. The standard plan was just a little bit too a little for me as I use about 21 hours. So this with the pro plan gives you about 30 hours of fast generations and it gives you commercial terms. It gives you access to your member gallery and then Pretty much the other big thing for me is the stealth image generation, meaning all of my designs are not going into the feed along with everyone else's because if I did that, I would probably have a lot of people following me and then they'd be able to copy every single prompt that I had um, and then utilize them as well. So the stealth image generation is probably the biggest thing for uh, most people if you're selling online. The other thing that is really helpful with the pro plan is that I can run 12 concurrent uh, fast jobs, meaning I can enter up to 12 different prompts all at once. And that is going to um, save me a lot of time instead of waiting in order to be able to put my next job in the queue. So that is the plan that I am on. And um, again, it can be 60 a month or you can get 20% off if you do the annual billing. So uh, once you've signed up for it, an account, you'll also need to download the Discord app because that is what it runs through. And this is kind of what it looks like on a desktop once it's opened. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go through a few things, but uh, for me, since I pay for the pro plan, I always am just on this one that says direct message right here. And then I have the mid journey bot. That way I have my own feed that I can just continually prompt in. I'm not seeing everything else that is in the general feed. I'll show you what it looks like. So if you're in one of the other discord i don't even know what these are really called i guess chats or rooms if you aren't paying for a pro plan you're going to be generating in here and this literally is just showing every single generation that someone makes and it just gets so crazy and uh, so I'm trying to say not time consuming, but a distraction uh, seeing everything that is being created in real time. And then also your stuff as well you can grab anybody's prompts and they can grab yours. So it's just uh, not beneficial for me to be in this type of feed, which is why I use the direct messages and have my own stuff going on that way. It's just all mine and I can jump back and forth to wherever I need to be and not get caught up in any type of distraction. Directions. So the first things that I would recommend is making sure that your settings are set correctly so that when you are generating, uh, you are getting the same types of results what, or not results, but the same type of settings and your stealth mode and whether you're on fast or relaxed, everything is the same. So to do that, you're just going to do the, I guess, backslash settings and hit enter. 
and that is going to bring up your settings and these are what mine are set to so i do currently run the mid journey 5.2 version i never switch back in between anything unless i need to go back to version 4 was when i first started the only time i'll go back there is if i need to recreate something that had a very specific style that was uh, set to mid journey 4 and i can tell the difference between the, the different versions that it's just not coming out the same so i'll go back and switch it to that put the same prompt in and change whatever i need to change and then it will generate it hopefully similar the next time around other than that i just keep it on the version 5.2 I always have it set to stylize very high, which is just the highest level that it can give you as far as style. The next thing I have is set to remix mode and high variation mode. Every time you put in a prompt, which is I'll show you how to enter a prompt in in a moment, you'll get four different results. And I have it set to high variation mode because I want four different as most different as I can, different types of variations so that I have a wide variety to choose from, if that makes sense. So I don't want that if you change that to like low, you're going to get all of your uh, results more similar to each other. But I like to have a wide variety to choose from, which is why I have it set to the high variation. I also have it just set to fast mode, which is plenty fast enough. So um, that is your settings. And then the next thing, which is pretty much the only thing you need to know how to is to do the backslash imagine, which is how you enter a prompt and then hit enter. And this is where you're going to enter your prompt. And I would highly recommend that you either follow. There's so many people on YouTube who uh, specifically teach about prompting in mid journey, but it's all about the more detail and more information that you can give mid journey to get the type of results that you're looking for is really important so you can't just expect it to understand the type of style that you're going after with just a few words for example if i type in a bee on a flower i'm going to get very typical bland normal results so nothing out of the ordinary or special with that type of prompt however if i were to type in just a little bit more detail so as you can see the results that i got for just a bee on a flower was a pretty realistic looking bee on three different yellow flowers and then one pink flower though they all look very similar it doesn't really give you anything extraordinary or anything that i would consider using just because it didn't have enough detail so i think that's the biggest thing that probably holds people up is that they don't put enough detail or style into their prompt and they expect all kinds of crazy results with a bare minimum of information provided to the bot. So let me go ahead and see if my other one has pulled up. And I just wanted to see the difference without putting the type of style that I wanted in there, what it turned out, if it was any different than the ones. And it looks like it's not going to, but I forgot one key element that I needed in order for me to be able to use this, though it did give me a red rose, it gave me spring, it gave me rain, it gave me the correct aspect ratio, which I'll go over this in just a moment. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in and add one thing on the style. While I'm waiting for that to generate, I am gonna go over this. This is our aspect ratio. So this is the size that you want your image to be at. This is a typical tumbler size so that I won't have to trim it or cut off anything when I go to upscale this and put it into a photo editing software like photoshop or kittle and add anything or change colors if i need to this is the typical size if you just need 
clip art, like a little, for if you're, let's say you're making a sticker or something very small, I would not even add an aspect ratio and it will just pull it up in a square just like this and that's all that you need for clip art type style. So it's almost finished here and I can tell that I know which one I probably want to use just because it's usable for Tumblr where parts of the image are not going to be cut off in for the most part. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this one here, which is the third image. And as you can see with my, the way that I have my variation style set on, it is gave me quite a wide variety of different ones to choose from. It gave me a realistic one, even though I asked for watercolor. Gave me this one with the bee towards me, a red bee with different colors of flowers, and then this one, which is the one that I like the most that I'm going to go ahead and use. So to choose one, you just need to click the little U3, which just means upscale number three. If I wanted to make more variations of this one, I would just choose V3, which just means make more variations. So I'm gonna go ahead and upscale number three and make more variations of number three as well. You can add in any more descriptors here if you want to, um, but I'm not going to. I just want three or four more variations of that. And while that is uh, generating more variations, I'm gonna go ahead and right click this to save the image and that will save that. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my AI Upscaler and there are lots of these um, for free. I just use this one because it's installed on my computer and this is pretty much my favorite one, but this is a paid one. So I'm just going to go ahead and upscale it. I only upscale it two times. If I upscale it four times, it generally becomes a little bit too big so i just upscale it twice and that's kind of all i need to do and then i click save and now it's ready for me to take it into whatever photo editing software i'm using and change add colors add text etc so um, looking at the variations i would say that pretty much all of these almost finished all of these would be usable and why I would consider doing this and why it's good to make all the variations it's a really easy way if you were creating bundles so say you're creating a bundle of bee flower um, tumblers or a set of clip art you can get all types of very quickly easily matching clip art or elements or tumblers all at once so that you don't need to be going back and individually doing it and you'll just be able to upscale all of these at once and then have a bundle of the same types of images or uh, graphics depending on what you're using them for. The only other thing I really use um, besides just generating images, which it's as simple as that, this is how you change your size again. And then you can, the only other thing really is there's this little, it's called the blend. So this is how you can blend a couple images together. And I've used this before where I have a set of designs that I really like and I want to create something new with them and kind of mash them up together. So for an example, and this was just backslash blend, you upload two different images that you would like to blend together and it pretty much produces really neat looking results. And that way you can have a new design out of designs that you've already created without very much effort. So I'm gonna choose this coral moon flower, and then I'm gonna choose, let's go ahead and see what it does with this 3D stained B because I haven't done this before. So you'll just add those and then click enter and that will generate and we'll see what it comes up with. So um, not really what I was looking for though. They're kind of cute, not this one, but um, this one might work. It kind of pulled the stained glass elements to the back and then it made a new floral bouquet collage thing with the circle moon and put the bee in the middle. It's still pretty cute. Not something that I would use, but I chose just two of the designs that I just had on my desktop. It did one earlier that I really liked and I blended this set here. It was with just a set of wildflowers and then this lunar moth that I had and it pulled in 
all of the elements of purple and changed the colors and just made some really cute floral collage type elements. But that's really all how I use Mid Journey for when creating graphics and designs. It's just a matter of practicing a lot and using different combinations of descriptors and getting very detailed with explaining what you're looking for uh, when creating a design. So hopefully this helped just with a little bit of navigation and some of the basic commands that you need to have and um, the type of plan that I need to run my business currently on. Let me know in the comments if you guys have any more of these types of video requests and I will try to get to them. Thanks for watching.